Okay, so in this video, we're solving the container with most water problem. Now, this is one of those problems where the description is complicated and it's pretty hard to explain it without a walkthrough. So you not, might not fully get what I'm about to talk about until we do the walkthrough, but that's okay. By the end of the video, you'll get it. Now let's start with the problem description. Just bear with me. You are given an array of n non-negative integers and each one of these integers helps to represent a point at the coordinate i and some value a at position i. So basically, for each element in our array, we would say that the position of the integer, the position of the element, is the x-axis, while the value is the y-axis of the point. Now, here's where things get a little bit complicated. Like we just said, each of the input's value represent the y-axis of a point and we have n points. Now, imagine if there is a building that goes down from that point to the floor. So its ceiling is at our point, our point represents the end of the building, and the bottom of the building is of course at the same x-axis as the position of the element, and it's a vertical building, but since it's on the floor, the y-axis is always zero. Now, if you don't really get that, again, that's okay, but that's basically what this part of the description means. Now, what we're asked to do is to find two buildings or two lines that can contain the most water. Now, what does it mean by that? Well, let's see an example. So here we got this input array. These are our n elements that we talked about earlier. And as you can see, we can actually represent this input by this graph right here. So each of these lines have a y-axis of the corresponding value in the array, meaning that the end there, they start from the floor where the y value is equal to zero and they go up until the value of the corresponding value in the array. So for example, that first line or building starts from the floor and goes till y is equal to one. That's because the value of the first element in the input is one, the second building starts from the floor and goes until y is equal to 8. So that's because the value of the second element in the array is 8. So this is how these structures form. Now, what we're asked to do is to find a container using these lines, such that this container would hold the most amount of water. So in here, for example, we can see that our best bet is to have these two buildings marked in red act as our container border. But why is that? How would we determine which container is the best, which borders are the best? Well, for us to answer this, we have to agree on a couple of things. First of which is the reason why we won't, for example, see that the water goes all the way to the top of the first building, like it does in the second building. I mean, you can see that the water reaches the end of the second building that we have in our maximum area, the last building that we have in our array, we can see that the water reaches the end of that building. Why don't we add wo more water, make a higher y-axis, like adding water all the way up to the first building in our container, the first building marked in red? Well, that's because the water would spill if it has more than that. If we had more water filling up our container, it would just go over the tip of the shortest building like that. So that's the most that we can fill. Now this is actually a pretty interesting thing to notice. That's because we can think of this as a rectangle. The area that the water fills, that is, is just a rectangle, where the y-axis of the rectangle is the shortest building between the two edges of the rectangle. So the extra length of the taller building won't actually help contain any more water. The water would only reach as far as the length of the smaller building. That extra length is useless, so this is actually a question asking us to find the maximum area that we can get out of these lines. And of course, as you probably know, the area of the rectangle is equal to the height of the rectangle multiplied by the width. So this is actually our real question here. We just need to find the maximum width, which is the maximum difference in x position, that's the width, multiplied by the height or multiplied by the length of the building, the minimum building of our container, that is. So, 
To achieve this, we'll utilize the two pointers technique. We'll just create a couple of pointers at both ends of the array, the left pointer pointing to the first element in the array and the right pointer pointing to the last one. Then we'll initialize our max area, which would initially be at zero, but will eventually be our final answer. We'll also start a loop that would go on as long as the right pointer is still bigger than the left one. We'll begin the loop's logic with trying to maximize our answer. So we'll find if we can get a bigger area by finding the minimum between the two buildings being pointed at by our pointers. That's our rectangle's height. And we'll just then multiply that by the distance between the two buildings, which is the difference between the two pointers. That's our rectangle width. Then we'll try to optimize our position for the next iteration in hopes of finding a bigger area. We'll do so by moving the pointer that currently points to the smaller building accordingly. So if the height of the left building is smaller, we'll just move our left pointer to point to the next building on its right. Similarly for the right pointer, if the building being pointed at by the right pointer is smaller, we'll decrement the right pointer, moving it to the left and making it point to the next building. So let's start the walkthrough now. We'll initialize our data. We'll begin with initializing the left pointer to point to the first element, the right pointer to point to the last element, and the maximum area to be at zero. And then we'll start our loop. And like we explained earlier, first piece of logic is trying to find if the area of the current rectangle that we can get out of these two buildings is bigger than the current area. So that's equivalent to finding the maximum between zero and the result of multiplying the minimum between 1 and 7, that would be the height of our rectangle, the height of our container, by the width of the rectangle, which is the difference between our two pointers, or 8 minus 0. Now we'll find that the result of this formula is 8, 8 is bigger than 0, so we'll update our best found area to be equal to 8. Next, we'll need to see which pointer are we going to move. And like I said earlier, we'll try to move the pointer pointing to the smaller building. So is the height of the building at the right pointer bigger than the height of the building at the left pointer? The answer is yes. So we'll keep pointing at the right building since it's bigger. And we'll move the left pointer to the right. Next, we'll continue our loop and do the same thing. We'll try to maximize our area. We'll find the result of multiplying the minimum between 7 and 8 to the distance between the two buildings that we have being pointed at right now, which is the same as finding the maximum between 8 and 7 multiplied by 7. That would lead to us updating our maximum area because the result of that formula is 49, which is bigger than 8. So our maximum area of water is now 49. Then we'll do the same check to decide which pointer we're going to move and this time we can see that the building being pointed at by the left pointer is actually bigger. So we'll move the right pointer to the left to now point to the building at position 7. Let's take a look at a couple more iterations before we fast forward a little. So here again we'll attempt to maximize our area. We'll find the maximum between 49 and the result of the area between our current two pointers. This would be equivalent to us finding the maximum between 49 and 18, which is 49. We'll then see that the left building is bigger than the right building. So we'll move the right pointer to point to the next building. Now I'll let you guys do a couple of iterations by yourself. So I'll just move along the slides and you can try to walk through it.
Okay, hope you did well on those past iterations. And now we're closing in on that left pointer. Again, same thing. We'll try to update our area if possible. We'll find that 49 is still our best bet. So we'll leave it at that. Now our left building is bigger than the right building. So we'll move the right pointer. So it would be something like this. And now we moved our right pointer to point at the same building that the left pointer currently points at. So this changes things because now this condition of the loop is not fulfilled. So we will break from the loop because R now is equal to L. The left pointer is equal to the right pointer. And this would mean that our final answer, our maximum area is 49. Now the time complexity for this is actually big L of N because we just did a loop over our input using our two pointers and it's a single pass, it's a single loop. So that's why it's a big O of N. That's why it's a linear complexity. And the space complexity is more merciful. We do a single pass over our container, but we never used any external data structures. We just used a couple of pointers and that's pretty much it. We didn't store anything into any data structure that relates to our input or relates to our input size. So in the next video, let's actually implement this. See you then.